questions. Let's move to the Zoom tool. Now, uh, the Zoom tool is self-explanatory. Let me just go back to another picture with some more detail in. Click the Zoom button, put the Zoom tool uh, where I want to view the image. And there we go, it zooms in to 100%. And then it generates a full resolution preview for me. And I can move around and pan using the hand tool, which is the tool alongside here and do so, like so. Or I could stay on the zoom tool and simply use the space bar to drag and move the image around. Now that takes me into 100% zoom, but of course I can use the plus and minus up here if I want to actually go in further, if I want to go into 200% or if I wanted to minus out a little bit to 50% as well, so I can modify that as well. So moving along further, let me just zoom out on the picture. I'm going to show you the next ones are the shadow warning and the highlight warning. So if I click highlight warning, it brings up, you notice that area there on, under the base of that paint tin went to a cyan color because it's showing me an area that is blown out beyond white. And if I uncheck it there and click shadow warning, we can see we have no areas where there is shadow detail that is lost uh, beyond black in that particular image. So nothing to worry about there. Um, let's go to an image where we've got maybe a bit of a mixture. Let me find, where was the one we were working on before? Let's go back to that one. Now, if I click highlight warning, it is bringing up a highlight warning here, you see on that part of the image. But if you remember, we were actually able to recover that data and as I recover it, you can see the highlight warning disappears. So the highlight warning shows you where the image has peaked out white or beyond white and then the highlight warning will disappear as you use the recovery tool. But remember that not every image has to have whites that are contained within the perfect white. Sometimes you're quite happy for the whites to be pure white or uh, to look overexposed in certain parts of the image. But the um, highlight warning is a useful tool for allowing us to see uh, and recognize these areas immediately. If I click shadow warning, again in this particular image there is no shadow areas uh, that it considered a problem. Now, moving on to the next one, we have the grid tool. Now, the grid tool is very useful for lining up things in your images, especially in studio environments, product photography, but also with the landscape work if you're shooting tethered. Now, I've only got it in a simple uh, split um, quadrant there, but if I click the right click or control click and bring up the grid options, we can see here I can specify the amount of lines for the grid and how many lines and squares, if you like, that I want the grid to show. And also I can specify the color of the grid. And this is very useful because sometimes you're uh, working on an image that may have gray in it and these gray lines wouldn't stand out. So if I click the specify color, I can now choose whatever color I want for the grid um, to make it stand out uh, more prominently. So that's the grid options. We then have the overlay tool. Now the overlay is a fantastic feature when you want to drag an image, a PNG file. Uh, for example, if I'm working with art directors and they're giving me a layout for an advert for a magazine, um, we can drag the PNG file into the focus software here so that I can see all the copy and the placement for all the logos and the text in the advert but still see my image underneath that transparent PNG file with all the text in place. This greatly assists you when you're working on layouts, shooting in the studio, when you're having to adjust your composition to suit a specific advertisement with copy in specific places. The other time that I use the overlay mode is if you've shot one particular image and you need to shoot another, but another object um, maybe has to be in a slightly different position, but one object has to remain, you can drag the first shot into this shot and then you can align everything and make sure that everything lines up perfectly and you can just reduce the opacity by checking overlay options 
and then you can adjust the opacity and scale, etc., of the image that you've dragged in there. So the overlay function, uh, very useful, uh, particularly useful with uh, dragging in uh, PNG files um, when working on uh, layouts with art directors. The next one is just simply selecting the image left and right, so you just can navigate through your images in that fashion as well. And then further over, we've got our red, green, and blue values based on wherever my mouse is pointing in the image. And we can switch to different modes, whether we want to use lab mode or output mode, um, but I tend to stick with the standard RGB. So that's the bottom part of the interface covered. And we're now going to revisit the panels on the top right-hand side here.